Welcome to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. I'm Scott Jordan, and my guest this week just finished competing on the International Series Driving Gravedigger. So let's go to Maryland on the Great Clips Hotline to welcome in Matt Cody. Matt, welcome to Inside Monster Jam. Thanks for joining me. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. So, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're obviously in, in a vehicle right now. You're not the only driver I've had on here in a car. We had Brandon Vincent in a loader. We had Tristan yep. England in, in his truck on his way to a gig. So what are you doing up there? Uh, just doing my uh, normal Monday through Friday job, uh, central transport. Um, just driving a truck, going around, picking up freight, dropping freight off and, you know, just living the life. And I think um, a, a lot of fans out there don't don't understand that's that some drivers do have you know regular lives Monday through Friday. You you appear larger than life on the television screen and, and driving your truck, but obviously you know it's 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 a it's a different world, a different economy now. So you're up there grinding, and I appreciate the hustle, man. You have uh, I believe you have four kids. I have three, so together we could almost form a baseball team uh, between yeah. our families, man. <laughs> so I get it. Um, let's talk about your start, man. I I I did some reading up on you. I've known you for a couple years now. Uh, but it fascinates me that you, you started working on trucks as an eighth grader. Is that correct? Yep, yep. When I was in, uh, well, my whole life, I uh, all I could think about was Monster Jam. Um, you know, riding my bicycle, jumping stuff, thinking that. And, um, yeah, in eighth grade, I got the chance to uh, get hooked up with Mike Vodders here in Hagerstown, Maryland. Let's talk about Mike Vodders. He's uh, he's been a force in the business for a long time. One of the most respected drivers, owners in, in Monster Truck, Monster Jam history. What was uh, what was the the introduction that you had to Mike? <laughs> um, uh, well, actually, uh, Stephen Thompson and uh, his brother uh, Mike Thompson. That's actually I went to school with Michael, and um, you know, just I seen that Michael and Stephen were at a display one day, and I was like, I need to become friends with them, and uh, so I, I started hanging out with them and. Uh, they took me back to the shop one day, and that's where I got hooked up with Mike. And um, just like everybody who meets Mike, he can be uh, he can be quiet, and uh, but once you get to know him, man, he'll he'll take you under his wing and, and treat you like a son. And uh, that's exactly what he did. And like I said, eighth grade. I mean, I was still in middle school, uh, fourteen years old, didn't even drive yet. Uh, he was taking me home after we get done working at the shop or after the weekend. So, man, it was it was a blessing just to get hooked up with him at a young age. So you start to. At 14 years old, and then eventually you end up behind the wheel of, of a monster truck for the first time, being able to drive. What was that experience like for you? I was it was awesome. Um, like I said, 14 years old, I did everything from sweeping the floors, cleaning. I cleaned out his, his the semi trucks, you know, anything you could think of to uh, get me to where I am now. I did it, and it didn't matter to me. And um, when 2012 came around, we were in Mexico, and uh, Trey Myers, unfortunately, couldn't make it down there. And he looked at me and said, would you like to drive? And I was like, man, what kind of question is that? Of course. So uh, 2012, never looked back. And here we are. You mentioned Mike Thompson. And sadly, we lost Mike back in 2019. Uh, you went to school with him. What, what, what are some of your fond memories of Mike? <laughs> man, I, I could talk here all day with uh, memories of Mike Thompson. Um, man, he was awesome. He was, he was my best friend. Um, man, he, he moved away to Maine. He went to Michigan. Uh, to work on some teams and every time he came back it was like we never left off you know we were just good friends we had good times driving up and down the road together when we did working in the shop um, riding four-wheelers in the field uh, man that dude was a trip and he was fun to be around funny make your guts laugh so hard and uh, man we miss him every day I had Travis Mallory on the show a couple of weeks ago. We talked about Tim Mente and the legacy that he left, another Maryland guy uh, like us. What do you think Mike's legacy is a as a monster truck driver? Uh, man, he, he he was just getting started too. Um, but his his legacy would definitely hold on. I mean, he was an excellent body a body guy, uh, good fabrications and welding. Um, like I said, he went up to Jim Kohler, worked with him for a couple years. Uh, went with Greg Wichenbach up there in Maine with uh, Crustacean. Did work with him and uh, the bodies that he built and the work that he did with them guys is uh, phenomenal. And um, there will always be a spot for Mike Thompson in the Mike Monster Truck in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's go back to, to Mike Vodders here as well. What 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 was his uh, influence in your development as a driver when you started sweeping the floors for him all the way up until you started driving? What what was what was Mike Vodders instilling in you to to get you prepared to have a career behind the wheel? Uh, I mean, I don't think he realized what he was doing, but uh, man, he was just molding another uh, another one of him. Let's just put it that way. He um, he's a great man, um, smart smarter than can be. I mean, yeah, he didn't, he didn't finish school and all that stuff, but, uh, that's what I tell everybody. I learned more back there working for him in the shop, being on the road than I probably ever would have going to school and, and, uh, trying to learn, uh, some of the basics. I mean, I got my CDL, 
uh, working with him and driving the, uh, the, the semi up and down the road. Uh, just the basics of mechanics and welding and uh, uh, fiberglass, just everything that you could think of, he he installed into me, and, and I'm very grateful for it. And like I said, he's a he's a very smart man. Uh, up next, we are going to chat about a place that you and I have both spent a lot of time at Hagerstown Speedway. That is coming up next on Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. Welcome back to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. This week, I'm chatting with Grave Digger driver Matt Cody. And Matt, we talked about your your the beginning of your career and, and working for Mike Vodders in Hagerstown. Well, I, I grew up in Glen Burnie, Maryland, and my the first time I ever went to a motorsport event was at Hagerstown Speedway. And I had a chance to finally do a Monster Jam event there a year ago where I, I had a chance to meet you and hang out with you and, and be on the track with you for a little bit. And uh, it, it was a full circle moment for me to go to Hagerstown Speedway where I spent so many nights and days as a kid with my parents and my family watching motorsports and monster trucks to be there so let's talk about the, the the influence that that historic speedway has had on your life oh yeah i mean that's uh by far my favorite um you know my favorite track to ever compete at um you know a lot of people say or ask you you know what's your favorite place i mean i've been of course this year i've been all over the world now and uh i, I love hagerstown um unfortunately uh monster jam uh, doesn't compete there anymore but uh just the like you said, the history. I mean, that's where I started going when I was, as long as I can remember, three years old, I want to say. And um, man, it's been a blast. They come there, uh, they do three events in one weekend, and I, I went to all three for as long as I can remember. Uh, that's where I seen Mike competing at. That's you know the Grave Digger. Um, you know all these his history trucks that have been there. It's been it's just been awesome. And it really is a fascinating venue for you fans out there watching and listening. If, if you've never been to a, a Speedway event with Monster Jam, I invite you to go when, when you see one come up because it, it's it's a different atmosphere. It gives you uh, an old school historic Monster yep. Jam feel with a new school element to it. And the one thing that fascinated me about being there is as a fan, when I would go as a kid, you'd only see what would happen once, you know, during on the track. But when the event's yep. over, you don't see that, you, you know, get in your car, you leave. But Going back there in the pit area, I mean, everybody had their camper set up and yeah. there was barbecues going on like crazy. Yeah, the whole Vodders team there as well. For me, it was a family atmosphere. Is that, is that how it, it's been for you throughout your life? Yeah, yeah. I mean, every, um, you know, all, all the events, any event we do, I, you know, we try to have fun and, um, you know, cook out, do whatever, you know, do whatever we got to do to have some fun and make it not feel like we're just out working on the weekends. But, uh, man, yeah, those uh, them summer Speedway shows, um, man, they're, they're something different. Like you said, they're barbecuing and. Everybody's just hanging out till you know, one, two o'clock in the morning. We're fixing stuff, hanging out, eating, and uh, just, you know, take, taking the work part away from it and just having a good time. I, I did I did miss out on the Sunday night barbecue when I was there because the Ravens were playing the Chiefs on Sunday night football. And I, I got I'll never forget, man. I pulled up to the stadium that morning. I asked uh, I asked the gentleman out front the parking attendant, I said, Can I park like right out here by you so I can just get in and get out? And I drove down to MT Bank Stadium. I didn't have a ticket. I was outside the stadium and, yeah. and saw a, a nice gentleman came up to me at, at, at halftime and um, I said, Hey, do you have a ticket? He said, Here, take mine, I'm done for the day. And I went in and watched the rest of the game. The awesome. Ravens came from behind and won. <laughs> so it was absolutely a, a wonderful uh, experience for me. Uh, let's talk about 2019 for you. You 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 become immortal in Monster Jam history. You win a World Finals Championship uh, in Speedster Obstacle Course. What was your weekend like in Orlando, finally getting that World Championship? Uh, yeah, that was awesome. Um, from the beginning, when they said that they were moving to Orlando and that they were adding um, extra competitions, and when I seen that they had the Speedsters in there, I knew that. Uh, I mean, I want to go there and compete in the Monster Jam truck no matter what, but, uh, the speedsters were like, man, they were fun. The, the four years of triple threat that I got to do, I'll, I'll never forget that. They were some of the best times in my career. And, um, those speedsters were another, uh, another, um, cool machine to drive. And, um, man, I, I worked hard that year and, um, made sure that I put myself in the position to go out there and have some fun. And we got the call, we got the invite and went to Orlando. It was hot. It was, it was fun. It was all new. And, uh, Man, we got to walk away with it. We had we had a little bit of damage. Almost didn't get to come back. Had some good luck on my side, but man, you got to have some luck every once in a while. And man, I'll never forget it. Just to hold that trophy. It might not be the Monster Jam truck, but it still says Monster Jam on it, and I'll always hold it forever. I've said this to Armando, and I've said it to Blake. A world championship is a world championship. It doesn't matter. Yep. You 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 are a world finals champion. That is how you'll be introduced for the rest of your career. So you absolutely take pride in that. Um, I, I do want to talk quickly about now that you're in Grave Digger. We'll get to that in a few minutes. But 
even though you you drove for Mike Vodders, you are synonymous in Monster Jam for Blue Thunder. What what is your time in Blue Thunder like? Uh, you know, just another uh, you know another mark on the history uh, books for me. Um, I've watched Blue Thunder for many years, all the way back to uh, Lyle Hancock, uh, Lindsey Wink. You know, they were all um, you know Dan Evans. They all did awesome in that, and then also Tyler Meninga. And um, you know, uh, like I said, I wanted to do Triple Threat. Uh, I had talked to to people. I talked to Mike about it. Uh, he he got you know talked to his higher ups that he needed to talk to, and um, I was all on board for that. That's really what I wanted to do. And when they uh, came back with the list of trucks, it was Blue Thunder or Monster Mutt Rottweiler. And at the time, I had JRC sock with me, and I said, "I'm sorry, buddy, but uh, Blue Thunder is mine." And you can have a dog. <laughs> well, it worked out great for you, I think. All right, Matt, we're coming up next. We're going to talk about his long-awaited journey to get into the driver's seat of Gravedigger as well as the International Series. That's coming up next on Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. We are back with more Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil, and I am back with Gravedigger driver Matt Cody. Matt, you drive Gravedigger this year on the International Series. I know that was a, a lifelong dream for you, Matt. How long have you wanted to drive the Black and Green Wrecking Machine in Monster Jam? And, uh, man, my whole life. Uh, I mean, when you think of Monster Jam, uh, that's the first thing everybody thinks of is Gravedigger. And, um, like I said, I mean, and I watched Mike and Black Stallion when I was younger, and but Gravedigger was right there with them. So, um, Gravedigger's been... You know, probably the truck I've always wanted to drive just like anybody else. And it's funny because people would, would say stuff before and I joked with them. And I said, one day I'm going to drive that thing. Just watch. But I never thought it would actually come true. So what um, – let's go back to, to the phone call that you got, whether it's an email or a phone call. Talk us through that. When did you find out that this this lifelong dream you had was actually going to come to fruition and you were going to drive Gravedigger? Uh, uh, well, so um, unfortunately, like, you know, when COVID hit in 2020, you know, put a damper in uh, everybody's plans and – um at the time, I only had one kid, and uh, like you said earlier, now we're up to four. And um, just the independent style uh, just wasn't working too too much for me at the moment. And I bought uh, my grandparents' house and 54 acres, so I put a, a, a lot on my plate all at once. So uh, it was just hard to uh, stay focused with Mike and do it full time. So um, sitting around, looking at Instagram, Facebook, and seeing uh, the Tristan and Tyler and everybody out there having a good time. I was like, man, I need to get back out there and do that. Um, so I sent Keith Speller an email probably in uh, September of 2022. And man, I didn't think he'd reply to me as fast as he did and uh, replied back to me. And we started talking and um, a couple weeks went by. And next thing you know, it was Thanksgiving. And uh, he called me back again and said, let's get this thing rolling. So uh, right before Christmas of 2022 is when I got uh, all the news. And man, I couldn't ask for a better holiday gift, I guess. So is this something that you, you know, campaigned for at all while you were driving these other trucks, something you mentioned to Keith, or is just literally something where he said, hey, we have this opportunity here for you for Gravedigger and just the stars aligned and it matched up? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the stars aligned and uh, once again, some luck came on my side and, um, you know, we, we started talking and uh, at first it was just figuring out what, what I can do and what I can't do and uh, where they were going to put me at and uh, they mentioned international and I said, yeah, you know, I just, I want to get my foot in the door with monster jam. I want to, uh, want to help build the brand. I want to be a part of it. And, um, you know, I, I want to get back out there and have fun and, and drive the truck. And, um, so we started talking and he asked me if there was any trucks I wanted to drive particularly. And, uh, you know, I told him no, cause like I said, I want to be a team player, whatever you put me in, I'll uh, represent the best, best I can for you. And right at the end, I joked with him and I said, well, you know, grave digger. Um, and he said, you know, we, we, we had mentioned that. And, but I took it with a grain of salt because I was like, uh huh, <laughs> you know, it's Grave Digger. But yeah. um, next thing you know, uh, you know, I, I had to fly down to Florida to do a little uh, fitting for a seat and stuff. And they threw the Grave Digger stuff at me, and I was like, "What's this?" And they're like, "You're Grave Digger," and I was like, "Wow!" Like, you nice. know, it took it, it took a little bit for it to set in, and it's I still got to pinch myself every once in a while. But uh, man, it's been awesome. What uh, What was Mike Vodder's reaction? Did you, did you call him and tell him, "Hey, I'm, I'm finally going to do this. I'm driving this truck now." Uh, well, I was actually at the shop, so I, um, I did it in person with him because I, you know, like he's like a father to me. He's, you know, I wouldn't be where I am right now if it wasn't for him and the opportunities that he gave me. So, I'm uh, very grateful for him. And, um, you know, we, we were at the time we still weren't sure. I wasn't sure if uh, I was still with Monster Jam yet or what the plans were. So he was talking to me about some events, and um, finally, when I got the call and I talked to him, uh, he was all for it. You know, he was happy. He knew that. Um, it was a great opportunity for me and that uh, I shouldn't let it pass up. 
and uh, he was there to support me. So I know that if I ever have to, the doors are always wide open at Baldur's Motorsports if I have to. But um, man, he was he he was he was happy. He was very happy for it. And like I said, it was like a father thing. It was like a son father thing, kind of me going on my own, I guess you could say. So not only do you get to drive the truck that you have dreamt about driving for your entire career, but you also get to do it internationally in some of the you know coolest, biggest cities in the oh, world. Yeah. How was the international tour for you? <laughs> it's been awesome. I, I mean. I feel like I use the word awesome a lot, but um, I mean, I, I never thought that uh, I would ever travel that far. Uh, prior to uh, driving Gravedigger, I flew to Mexico City and I flew to Puerto Rico, and uh, that's my longest flights I've ever done. And uh, I've always just driven the semi up and down the road. So uh, to get on a plane for 10 plus hours and go to all these places, it, it's been amazing. Um, very grateful for the opportunity. Like, um, you know, if it, if it only lasts one year, at least I can say I've been to all these places, many miles all across the world. And um, but hopefully not. And I look forward to uh, doing this uh, for many more years. Yeah, you had a great series. And I, I could see the support on social media from the Anderson family uh, with, with with your events. And let's talk about London, because we did broadcast that Adam Entignap and I called that. So you can check that out on YouTube uh, here in, in the near future. And congratulations on the event championship there. It was a the biggest stage of them all a, a huge event. We had four Marvel Monster Jam trucks debuting all eyes on them. And then here comes Matt Cody oh, yeah. just sliding in as Gravedigger winning the event champion. Chip, man talk about that that day for you in london where you have all these eyes on you and and this incredible platform with the marvel monster jam trucks and you win the event championship oh yeah i mean uh i'm still processing and everything uh this whole year and and the weekend and um i mean just the support from uh, like you said the andersons and uh all the fans i mean i was actually i was kind of nervous when the news broke about gravedigger because i was like man i feel like a lot of people were gonna have some negative comments out there but uh it's been awesome. I mean, they've been nothing but supportive. Um, going to London, I mean, there was Marvel trucks. I mean, there were so, so many bosses out there that um, people I haven't even met. And, uh, I mean, there was just all eyes there. And, um, and London's a big stage, and I, we knew we wanted to take over that market. And um, Man, that place was packed. They were loud. The floor was huge. Um, but, yeah, I mean, going there. Racing was okay. Uh, we had some rain. Uh, it's a two wheels. I'm still I'm still trying to um, learn new tricks and just you know have some fun with it and uh, freestyle. I knew that I just need to go out there and uh, do it the gravedigger way, and that's what we did. Some big air and a couple of combo jumps, and um, ended off with a backflip and with a lot of uh, some damage at the end, just like gravedigger would. So man, it's been an awesome weekend. Televised my first stadium overall event win, and um, I'm looking forward to doing some more. And I, I know you, you spent so many years wrenching on the trucks as well as driving them, and, and you still do that. But how does it feel having a, a top-notch crew behind you to to take a lot of that work and, and, and let you focus on driving? Man, it's, it's, uh, it's still weird to me. Um, <laughs> every once in a while, you'll see me grab a wrench and, and help him out a little bit. But uh, Kevin uh, Blinky, that's what we call him, man. He's, he's top-notch, and I've been with him before in the past when I was uh, running Blue Thunder, and he was uh, wrenching with Brandon Vincent and Gravedigger, and uh, he knows his stuff, and I know that when I get in that truck, I can trust him. So coming from being a mechanic, you you know, you know you always want to do stuff yourself, and uh, I know that he's got it done. So if I, if I, if I radio it back to him or tell him what I think's wrong, and he's on it for the next weekend. So very, uh, very reliable man, and I'm glad to have him uh, for my first year. So if you could write the script for next year, where would you be? What would you be doing? Uh, if I could, I'd, if I could, I'd choose a uh, – a domestic a United States arena tour on the East coast. Cause uh, man, I've been all over them East coast arenas and I think it would be sweet to come back and uh, drive Gravedigger and just show all the fans what I can do. And on the North American side, but um, I'm like I said earlier, I'm a team player. So uh, wherever monster jam wants to put me, if they put me international, if they put me in California, they put me in Mexico, um, send me my plane ticket and I'm ready to go. Cause uh, I just want to have fun. I want to drive. Um, like I said, I took a little bit of a break with COVID and, not getting to do so much. So um, I'm back in it now. So uh, the spark kind of went away for a little bit. And I felt like it was just a job and I was just working and uh, I'm having fun this year. So it's back, the flames there and um, wherever they put me. So if I can be in arena tour next year, awesome. If I go international, awesome. As long as I'm driving, having fun, that's all that matters. Hey, as a Maryland guy, I say awesome a lot too, man. It, it's showing. You're having fun. You're back in a big way. Up next, I ask your questions to Matt Cody. Stick around. More Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil, is next.
Welcome back to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. I'm Scott Jordan. I am joined this week by Gravedigger's Matt Cody. And right now, it's time to ask your fan questions. You can be a part of the show by following me on Instagram as Scott Jordan MJSX. We're going to start with Monster Jam Dean. He wants to know what's been your favorite country that you have visited this year so far with Monster Jam, starting with Sweden up to London and all the way through Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, uh, by far, South Africa. Um, you know, London, uh, Germany, Sweden, they're all cool, uh, but they all kind of start to, they all, well, they all got different, you know, you got to go there to experience it, but they all got, they all kind of start to blend in, you know, the cool buildings and castles and stuff. But um, when I went to South Africa, I knew that I was in a different country, but it was just the environment, the people, uh, they were supportive, they're friendly. Um, I mean, it's just being in America, you, you take a little bit for granted on what we have here and what we get to do. And when you get to go to other places and see, um, how they live, man, you just opens up your eyes. And uh, South Africa, by far, my favorite place. And if I could go there every year, I totally would. All right, let's see. Caden Allen7 wants to know, what has been your favorite moment so far behind the wheel of Gravedigger? If you could just pick one, I know it's hard, but if you just pick one, what would that moment be? Um, I guess up to this point would be uh, London. I mean, the whole thing of just driving Gravedigger is awesome, but uh, London, all the pieces came together and, Got the, uh, you know, the freestyle win and the overall, and um, so we'll go with London. Noki Menz wants to know, other than Gravedigger, what is the favorite truck you've driven? Um, well, that one have to be, you have to go with identity on that one because uh, Blue Thunder and Iron Warrior were uh, the same truck. And Taurus was all in the same truck, so we just changed the bodies. But uh, that particular chassis was one of my favorites because I was, I built it. It was like one of the first trucks that I actually put together and, um, all hands on deck and, um, but, uh, blue thunder, blue thunder was always my favorite identity. I love the thunderstruck song and, and that thing looks sweet when it's shined up and the lights are shot or uh, rocking. All right, Matt Cody, been an absolute pleasure, man. I wish you the best of luck. Can't wait to see what's next for you. As for you, what's next for you is to watch more inside monster jam powered by Lucas oil. I'll see you right here next week.